Good morning, and welcome to Morning Movie News, where, as you can see, the show has a new layout and a new logo. And that logo was designed for fun new merchandise. Yes, when I debuted merchandise right before the holidays, a number of you said, Grace, how can you not have a shirt for Morning Movie News that says, Good morning, and welcome to Morning Movie News. So I was like, great idea. So I worked with Broadband TV, my MCN, to design some really cool merchandise for you. That's right, there are two Morning Movie News uh, items for purchase uh, available right now at the uh, Beyond the Trailer store, and the link is down below in the video description. So the first is a shirt. Now, you guys really liked the red shirt, so we did a blue shirt. Let's, this, that's good. A blue shirt <laughs> for this show, also because it's, you know, the morning, right? A, a nice uh, morning sky. And as you can see, it says, good morning and welcome to Morning Movie News. Uh, and so it's a great, really soft American apparel shirt. I know some of you felt it took a little bit long to get your merchandise last time. Well, we changed distributors, so you will get it much faster, but still shipping worldwide. So anyone can get this shirt, but that's not all. In addition to this shirt, you can also get, because it's a morning news show, a mug. Oh, I'm so proud of the mug. It's really big, as you can see. It says, so it says morning movie news here, and then on the back it says, good morning and welcome to morning movie news. And I'm proud to say, that we have a 20% discount on the mug, uh, code Morning Movie News, which you enter when you're checking out, uh, which is good through Sunday. So we got the mug for sale. These things are up right now and they'll be on the trailer store. They'll be up permanently, but the sale is through Sunday. So I'll remind you two over the next couple of days. But um, thank you guys for tuning in to Morning Movie News. I'm so glad that you enjoy the show so much that you enough that you asked for merchandise. And I'm so happy to be able to have been to, you know, be able to provide you not only with merchandise, but merchandise I'm really proud of and I think is you know, genuinely nice. So enjoy, and also thank you for uh, helping, you know, giving me uh, a situation where I came up with this amazing new logo, again, with the help of uh, broadband. All right, so let's dive in to today's morning movie news. So we have a bit of a theme for the, you know, as you can see, it's now two stories and one viewer question. So the two stories, uh, the theme, I couldn't go for the viewer question, although some of you who are DCEU haters will think that the theme does apply to the viewer question, and it's, really? You're gonna keep going with this, right? <laughs> All right, so <clears throat> the first is, as you can see, in humans, which, yeah, Jeff Loeb, are we really doing this? Uh, I don't even know how much Jeff Loeb is into it. I think it's really Isaac Perlmutter's war on the X-Men and the fact that Marvel doesn't have the film rights to it, and so he keeps trying to replace them with the Inhumans. You know, they did it on Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. He tried to force uh, Kevin Feige to make a movie, I knew way early that Kevin Feige, as soon as the Inhumans showed up in Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., Kevin Feige wasn't going to touch him, right? I mean, as soon as anyone goes to Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., Sif never should have shown up there. I think I think um, Samuel L. Jackson did maybe once, but he's, he's Samuel L. Jackson. But, you know, stay away. You know, Coulson never came back, right? Like, don't touch ABC, you know, Marvel television because uh, Kevin Feige hates Isaac Perlmutter. And that's the whole reason that he separated himself from the um, TV and comics division to become his own division all by himself. Uh, but so anyway, this is a war that Isaac Perlmutter continues to rage on his own. And he's like, ah, forget you, Kevin Feige. If you don't want to make a movie, I'm going to make this amazing television show on ABC. I'm like, ABC's really, you know, their sweet spot is sitcoms and Shonda Rhimes. And, you know, that's not really all that they got. And reality. You know, Shark Tank is a fabulous show. Uh, but... Uh, Marvel TV is insisting this is going to work out, and they're going to make like I think like I think it's like eight episodes, but two of them are going to be released as a movie in theaters, right? So, let's see. So the reason it's in the news again is that they've cast Black Bolt, which is a pretty important role. He's the king of the Inhumans, and it's a tough role because he can't speak. His voice is his power, and with one word, he can blow you away, right? So they cast uh, Hell on Wheels star. Uh, I use that term loosely because Hell on Wheels is not a particularly well-known show. It's like, it's on AMC, I think. Nobody talks about it. Uh, Anson Mount, who actually, I have to be fair, 
I think looks a lot like Black Bolt. I think he's got, and he's, he, you know, he's got that leading man look, you know. And Black Bolt's going to have to be a lot about his looks because he doesn't, again, he doesn't speak. And that's part of the press release. They're like, Anson's excited to take on a role where he doesn't speak. And I'm like, I think Anson's just excited to take on any role, to be perfectly honest with you. Now, I also, I want to point out that a couple, um, I'd say maybe two years ago at this point, I was in Los Angeles and I was at the Four Seasons Hotel. Uh, uh, not, I think, not the, I, don't, I don't know if it was the Beverly Hills one, but it's the one on Doheny. Uh, they use it for a lot of junkets, etc. So I was at the hotel and I was in the elevator and Anson Mount came in. This is my, this, whenever I hear Anson Mount, because I don't watch Hell on Wheels, this is what I think of. And I, I did know Hell on Wheels because I'd seen the ads and that was like when Hell on Wheels was somewhat talked about. And I was like, oh, that's the Hell, I was first you, because he's not a big star, you look at him and you go, where do I know you from? And then you think for a minute, you're like, oh, hell on wheels guy. And I have to say, he had a charisma in person that he doesn't, that has so far has not translated to the screen. So I'm rooting for the guy. He seemed very nice. He's very polite uh, in my sh very short elevator ex encounter with him. You know, he was, um, you know, quite the gentleman. Let me go out first. Uh, and so, you know, he didn't have, he didn't seem to have an attitude. So I kind of like him because of that. So I hope that he does well, and I, you know, I would be okay with casting him as Black Bolt because let's be honest, who else am I really going to get? Especially the way Agents of Shield and Agent Carter went down, right? I mean, this isn't exactly, a, I mean, this isn't a, a Netflix show for Marvel, right? This is an ABC Marvel show, and that really is tough. Now they did get Ramsey Bolton from uh, Game of Thrones, aka Ewan uh, Ruin to play basically Ramsey Bolton of the Inhumans, Black Bolt's brother Maximus, who really wants to be the leader. Uh, and they kind of look alike too, so I think that's also good casting. Anson Mountain and um, Ewan Rowan. But the real linchpin is gonna be Medusa. Medusa is a really important character. She's very popular with, uh, you know, she's not super popular, like uh, she doesn't have her own title, <clears throat> but she has a fan base. And I think she could become a bigger name if they cast the right actress. Uh, they apparently are considering someone from Arrow or something. That sounds not good to me. I would try and get a little bit of a name, right? I think she has to have good chemistry with Black Bolt. And I'm also curious if ABC can afford Medusa's hair. Like, how on earth are they going to do that? It's supposed to constantly be alive. Kind of like, you know, we've seen so many underwater characters lately. Basically like that. But I don't really know if ABC can afford that. She's probably going to have to have regular hair until she wants to use it. And then I would imagine it's going to look pretty bad on an ABC budget. But I don't know. We'll see. I'm curious, it's really like space Guardians of the Galaxy, it's Marvel's Guardians of the Galaxy to some degree. So, uh, but I just, I, every time I see the Inhumans as a huge X-Men fan, I'm like, you're not the X-Men. So we'll see how this turns out. Now, another thing I can't believe they're doing, <clears throat> but I'm gonna explain to you why, is that DreamWorks Animation has greenlit Trolls 2 for April 10th, 2020, three years from now. I don't know why they take so long to get their sequels out. I know animation takes a long time, but still, you know, it's not like Trolls is frozen or, or, or Zootopia where people will wait. I think Trolls, um, you know, it hasn't made a ton of money actually at the box office. Uh, you know, it's interesting to me that DreamWorks just keeps going when all signs seem to say maybe you should stop, right? Or at least, although I do think Boss Baby looks very good, but I think that they're really missing their, an identity. You know, like how do you distinguish DreamWorks films, for instance, from Warner Brothers animation films like Storks? I think it's really hard to do that. Uh, Warner Brothers is trying to get on the board right now. They don't, I think Warner, outside the Lego movies, Warner Brothers can't worry about establishing an identity. Even Sony has an identity, though, with uh, um, tr uh, Smurfs and uh, <laughs> the Blue Trolls. Uh, <clears throat> but with Smurfs and Hotel Transylvania, their movies kind of have a, 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 a personality. And um, Cloudy with a Chance of Meatballs, their movies have a personality emerging as well. DreamWorks Animation, and at one point they did, but they've lost it. So that should be really, like Illumination Entertainment, as soon as you see an Illumination Entertainment movie, you know that's what it is. As soon as you see a Pixar movie, you know it. Disney, you know it. You, these brands are recognizable from a frame. And I think that unless you know the property, I think DreamWorks is just a little bit not in focus enough. Now, Trolls only made $340 million worldwide, which is the 19th most successful film for the company. So I don't know why they would be like, yeah, sequel, but I'll tell you why after I looked into it. Well, actually, this uh, when Toy Fair was coming out, uh, you know, about a week or so ago, two weeks, I think, ago at this point, I read an article and I kept it in mind. And, I, and when I saw this Trolls 2 headline, I was like, ah. And someone was like, you want to know what the biggest Toy brands that had the most growth last year were in 2016 were? I'll tell you. Well, they told me and I'll tell you. 
trolls. So trolls, they're not making other trolls because of the box office so much, but because it's what it's the it's the horse for the giant heavy filled cart of merchandise that it's dragging behind it, right? Also, also, and it's everywhere. It's not just toys, but they're able to put it like on. Like if you go to the supermarket, you see trolls like macaroni and cheese and trolls like fruit roll-ups, etc. Uh, but also Finding Dory, huge brand last year. And then get this, Batman v Superman was the third biggest toy brand in 2016. That, whoa, that's amazing. And that right there is part of the answer to today's viewer question. This is from Adrian from Poland. What a great Twitter handle. So a, very, very clear, Adrian from Poland. So Adrian from Poland says, oh, hey, Grace. How strong do you think is the possibility that Reeves' Matt Reeves' Batman, although I really think it's still Ben Affleck's Batman, and Reeves is an extension of Ben Affleck, which is why he was chosen. But how likely do you think it is that Reeves' Batman movie will be an R-rated Batman movie? Well, when you see that thing about the toys, it's like almost nil that it will be R-rated because Warner Brothers is not going to create an R-rated movie that is a toy juggernaut, you know, because then they need kids to see the movie to say, I want those toys, right? So there's no way it's going to be R-rated right there. That's, that's, the, that's the answer to your question. But I'll further explain it why they might not want to go in the R direction. Uh, also, you know, you might think, well, what about the BVS violence? You know, Batman killed people, but he did kill people in Batman v Superman, which was a PG-13 movie. So you can kind of have your cake and eat it too. Uh, I think Batman, the most important thing about the Batman movie will be sty how stylistic it is, and I'm concerned about that with Matt Reeves. But we'll see. He does have some nice shots in the Planet of the Apes movies. I will give him that. But I don't think overall, when I think of Planet of the Apes movies, I think of Andy Serkis, not it, how st the, style, the style of it. So anyway, the other problem is box office. Now, Wolverine is an R-rated movie, I'm um, Logan, you know, coming up, and it's supposed to open with just 81. That's pretty low. That's nowhere near what Deadpool opened with, with uh, which was 132. So <clears throat> you can see the art, like Deadpool was like, um, you know, a really unique situation where people were, where it was new, it was funny, uh, you know, everybody was talking about it. Ryan Reynolds helped engineer one of the most brilliant ad campaigns of all time. So that's how he got it to 132. I'd be curious to see how Deadpool 2 opens, especially now that a lot of families know that, yes, Deadpool is not for kids. I actually think, interestingly, Wolverine is fine for kids. Um, <clears throat> but look at the lower box office. I also think Wolverine, Logan is dragging two very bad Wolverine films behind it. Well, one bad one and one mediocre one. And that's certainly not helping uh, matters. And so 81 and Deadpool 132, but Batman v Superman opened at 166. So you can see that PG-13 is really important for the box office. And the Batman does not want to open at a low number, you know, especially with all the hate that's engineered towards the DCEU these days. The, one of the best things they have going for them, now besides an Oscar for Suicide Squad's hair and makeup, is that they have box office numbers, right? Warner Brothers can still say, ah, people complain, but they also pay to see it. So they can't do anything to endanger that or they're just going to be up crap creek without a paddle, right? <clears throat> they need that box office paddle. So I think that there is pretty much no chance that it would be R-rated. And I don't think it needs to be. That's not what Batman's about. Uh, maybe, you know, maybe you can play around with Nightwing being R-rated or something like that. Or maybe Gotham City Sirens or Suicide Squad 2. Those are films that I would potentially be interested in R-rating. Or if you did a Joker movie, people love the Joker. Those things could work. But Batman, Batman has forever, for so long, been about toys as much as he is about the story of the Batman that you just can't slap an R rating on him. But that's a great question, Adrian. I loved it. Thank you so much for asking it. Thank you everybody for tuning in today. And don't forget, uh, go, you know, visit the Beyond the Trailer store. Link is down below in the video description to get this t-shirt, this t-shirt, and this, uh, this mug, which of course in the back again says, good morning and welcome to morning movie news. And 20% off through Sunday. Okay, you can check out some more videos right now.